So we begin by again setting our motivation to do whatever we possibly can to attain the peerless state of enlightenment in order to benefit all living beings. And knowing that to attain that state, I must perfect all the trainings on the Bodhisattva path. To perfect those trainings, I need to be able to understand them perfectly. And to understand them perfectly, I need to rely upon a non-mistaken presentation. And thus it is that with this in mind, I, I'm here to listen to some verses from uh, the King of Mind training texts, the Bodhisattva's way of life, as composed by the great master Shantideva. As we normally do, then we next set up our merit fields, which consists of, in actual fact, our own root guru in the aspect of Shakyamuni Buddha. And uh, the Buddha has one face, two hands, is sitting in the Vajra posture with the right hand in the earth touching mudra and the second and the left hand in the meditative equipoise mudra holding an arms bowl filled with nectar. And next we visualize in the space all around us all kind mother sentient beings starting with the mother and father of this life and then going back into you know the visualizing the mother and father of the, the previous life the one previous to that the one previous to that the one previous to that going back to beginningless time and so that we uh, uh, encompass all kind mother sentient beings who have sustained us with that kindness since a beginningless time and that they are all around us without exception <clears throat>
Hani dede atanca hani çocuğu gevazsa da cevalı ya çoba pi. Çocuğu gevazsa da cevalı çoba pi olarak dene en de. Çocuğu gevazsa da cevalı çoba da da giriş yeni. En tügüyle deva çoğut deve tombanya. Dedin yesin bebe işi kesin o adını kumaca. So then we go bring our attention back to the figure that uh, is uh, at the merit field in front. They see that the Guru Buddha is marked by the three syllables, Om at the crown, A at the throat, and Hung at the heart center. From the Hung at the heart center, countless rays of light emanates going out into all the three realms of existence, thereby uh, purifying all of the uh, negativities and obscurations and the, the place, in fact, as well, of purified of all negativities and its imprints. And this then virtue of being able to do this is um, is kind of made manifest and offered to all the, the Buddhas of the three times in all the realms of existence. And it then uh, is, man or kind of is symbolized by uh, bliss, which combines with uh, voidness. And we see all these Buddhas abiding in the wis wisdom of non-dual bliss and voidness. ほんで、ほんで、ほんで、ほんで、ほんで、ほんで、ほんで、ほんで、ほんで、ほんで、ほんで、ほんで、ほんで、ほんで、ほんで、ほんで、ほんで、ほんで、ほんで、ほんで、
and for our sake and for all sentient beings has manifest full and complete enlightenment uh, based on that uh, motivation. And so we and myself and all the sentient beings all around now are filled with the triple faith, the uh, faith of pure faith, faith of conviction and a manifest faith. And <laughs> so then further reflecting on the qualities of body speech and mind of the guru buddha again the uh, faith in the capacity of an enlightened being to help is generated that pure faith manifest faith and faith of conviction and that uh, also are reflecting on uh, the suffering of sentient beings uh, bringing forth uh, the mind of compassion and suffering and, and reflecting on the, the happiness of sentient beings the developing that mind of love and so here be it the you know we're thinking about how wonderful it would be if all sentient beings were free from suffering and the cause of suffering how wonderful if all sentient beings uh, happy, uh, had the happiness and the cause of happiness. How wonderful if all sentient beings had the happiness that knows no suffering and the excellent bliss of liberation. And we really want to generate a certain personal responsibility around that. May I be, may I be able to achieve that for sentient beings? I will. And then we really think of mm -hmm. how wonderful it would be if we had the blessing of the Guru Buddha to be able to do that. But of course, in reflecting on sentient beings and how we, we have a whole sum and others distant, we realize how limited we are and how much we need that foundation of equanimity. So how wonderful if all sentient beings could abide in equanimity, free from attachment and anger that holds some close and others distant. May this be the case. I will see to it that it is the case. So Guru Deity, uh, please bless me to make it so. And we make this heartfelt supplication to be able to generate uh, these four immeasurable qualities uh, for ourselves and and we witness the light ray emanating and with the purifying light uh, entering into ourselves and, and the crowns of all sentient beings and purifying all the obstacles to our being able to generate these four immeasurable qualities and we really feel uh, that we have a renewed potential uh, to do so as a result of that what <laughs> And again, and making uh, supplications again to the Guru Buddha and reflecting on the qualities of body, speech and mind of the enlightened being. Mm -hmm. And we really developed this sense of how wonderful it would be able to do to quickly 
uh, generate these uh, uh, four immeasurable thoughts and to really feel that as a result of our supplications and the blessing of the Guru Buddha, uh, that we have the capacity to really quickly, and we have laid down a very kind of special imprint on our minds now uh, to quickly be able to generate these uh, four immeasurable thoughts into realization. Tamje Yontoma, Eat Lazarjuma <laughs> And so in re reflecting on again, uh, <clears throat> the, the job ahead really for us is to really generate that mind of enlightenment and to do so as, um, uh, as genuinely as possible. But here, uh, we need to understand where we're at. We want to, on the one hand, uh, generate that compassion which finds it unbearable that sentient beings uh, should suffer. Uh, we want to uh, develop the love that wants all sentient beings to be happy. But without being able to base that on a sense of affection towards all sentient beings, a sense of that equality and this affection towards all sentient beings, then we can't really think about you know, genuinely developing that sense of compassion that wants to free them from suffering or that love that wants to place them into every happiness. We can't go further into developing that special intention where, whereby we take a personal responsibility to do that for all sentient beings. And therefore, we certainly can't uh, envisage generating the mind of enlightenment, wanting to attain enlightenment purely for the benefit of all sentient beings. And so we really have to go back to first basis, uh, the kind of foundation wherein uh, we are able to kind of really understand the necessity of affectionate, generating that sense of affectionate love, that whereby, you know, there is no sense of friend or enemy anymore. There's no sense of basing our interactions on attachment and aversion. 
uh, that we have gone beyond that state into an equanimity, uh, an attitude towards all sentient beings. And that uh, here it's seeing them as all greatly kind. This is how we define the human, the person or the being that we are interacting with. And the, we use the example of the mother to begin this because the mother is the example of the greatest kindness we have experienced. And so we talk about the example of the mother in this life and wanting to you know, remember that kindness, uh, to uh, then to repay that kindness. So seeing all sentient beings as, as one's mother, remembering how incredibly kind the mother is, and then wishing to repay that kindness. And from that, and then we can uh, establish that sense of loving affection towards all sentient beings. This is what is the natural result of generating uh, these three causes. And that, uh, therefore, if when we have that basis, that equanimous attitude towards all sentient beings, seeing them in this positive light of wanting to repay uh, that kindness, uh, then, of course, we can really think about we're really more invested in the, uh, wanting to remove their suffering, which develops the compassion. Uh, we're really more invested in wanting to place them into every happiness, which uh, it brings forth that love. And of course, then that is the proper basis for establishing a special intention where we take a, a more personal responsibility for doing this for all sentient beings. And that is the, the precursor to developing the mind of enlightenment itself, where we generate a genuine attitude to attain enlightenment uh, purely for the benefit of all sentient beings. And so this is how we can establish it step by step uh, to generate that mind of enlightenment. We are, are in negating all of the inconducive conditions, putting them out of the way, and we're uh, really nourishing our mind with the conducive conditions to be able to, to really bring this off, to really develop this in a non-adulterated way. the <clears throat> Chanjugo <laughs> Tangtai what So when we consider 
the mind of enlightenment itself as you know the 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 pinnacle of practice the most important aspect of practice and then of course we must have an equal appreciation for all the causes that bring off that mind of enlightenment that allow for that result to uh, generate in our minds therefore well, we have uh, an equal sense of importance around the development of compassion wishing to remove all suffering uh, an equal sense of importance around love, wanting to place all beings in happiness. And of course, that extends to all the different causes, such as generating that affectionate love for all sentient beings. And, and of course, that leads to what leads to uh, affectionate love itself, uh, developing uh, the, the fact that seeing all sentient beings as one's mother, remembering the kindness of the mother and wishing to repay the kindness of the mother. And that leading to affectionate love. And so to be able to, to really have that sense of importance around all the different uh, causes that lead to the mind of enlightenment is important for us to be able to put it into practice in order and in, and complete. And so it's kind of very, very important to do so. The actual practice of this is uh, two different main streams of practice. Um, one is referred to as the equalizing and exchange of self and others. Uh, the other is known as the seven cause and effect instruction. It's uh, whatever practice you have a special affinity with, uh, that's the one you should choose and emphasize. But bearing in mind that the objective is exactly the same, uh, that the objective is to attain the mind of enlightenment, that one mind wishing to attain enlightenment for the benefit of all sentient beings. And in both uh, uh, systems, uh, the development of affectionate love is indispensable. Uh, that means that you will not have a fully qualified mind of enlightenment unless you develop that sense of affectionate love for all sentient beings. And so what you're looking for is that sense of full, fully qualified results. So you, the fully qualified mind of enlightenment re relies on a fully qualified development of this special intention, a fully qualified development of the compassion wishing to remove or finding suffering unbearable, uh, a, a fully qualified love wishing all sentient beings to be happy. And of course, a fully qualified affectionate love towards all sentient beings, the fully qualified uh, wishing to repay the kindness, remembering the kindness and seeing all sentient beings as one's mother. And so it's really being able to uh, put in place all of the conducive conditions so that one can generate each stage of these practices in the most excellent and the most refined and most genuine fashion. And also uh, putting aside or eradicating all inconducive conditions that might interfere with that. Tungenawa So, and then reflecting on 
the fact of cyclic existence being in the nature of suffering and inundated with suffering, of course, we, uh, leads to us a genuine, gen, generating a genuine compassion and wishing again to uh, that all sentient beings not only be free from that suffering, but have every happiness is the love for all sentient beings. Uh, taking that on personally is the special intention. I will be the one uh, to bring this off for all sentient beings. And that uh, this then generates that mind of enlightenment, you know, leading to that mind of enlightenment, uh, bringing our attention to the Guru Buddha in front in our merit field. We realize that the Buddha has gone through this process of generating that mind of enlightenment for all sentient beings, working on the path for all sentient beings and generating full and complete enlightenment, all purely for the benefit of sentient beings. And from that uh, state of mind knows the uh, the personalities and dispositions of all sentient beings who is working in each ever and every moment uh, to ripen the minds of beings who have not yet been ripened to further ripen those that have been somewhat ripened and is able to do this uh, constantly. And so when I generate the want to generate this mind of enlightenment then to be able to uh, indeed uh, emulate uh, the Buddha, I want it to be absolutely a genuine uh, mind of enlightenment. So thinking about that, uh, it, it, this generates the syllable ah, uh, which uh, uh, transforms into uh, the moon disk mandala. At, uh, at the heart of the Guru Buddha and at the heart of myself and all sentient beings. What <laughs> Not and so we we feel that all sentient beings, the all the sentient beings all around us, are thinking in exactly the same way as uh, as we are, and that to to really uh, genuinely uh, generate that mind of enlightenment. Also, when I say that I will attain enlightenment for the benefit of all sentient beings, I now enter into an analysis of that I. Uh, where is that I to be found? Is it in the body? Is it in the mind? And we're analyzing uh, to see where it is to be manifest in the body. And we go through that and find even at the atomic level that is not to be found. And then when we look into the mind, the past and future moments of the mind, again, uh, we do not find that I. And so we really just um, uh, settle on the, the, the not finding of that objectively existent I and, and place our focus on that for a moment. What there is a water, then they get Gaja Kazam Yoba Yina, Narawan, the Tuba Yina, what that says at the La Niko Gre, Yosa de la Kawaiina, Yosa de Yana, Lugitan, Yoba Yana, Segudo, Dini Le Matevata. That did say to the Mani do, Narawan the Matuba Tagar, Narawan the Matuba Tati, Yoba Yisa, what are the Yene? That not it. Rawan the Matuba Yisa, what are you to do? Then it's one meadow you to shame into Sansaki. Then 
Wadidu kumba shene. Wada kacha kazan de la semisha ni. Dende nyebe lote. Dende nyebe lote. Ani. Dengi. Rangi nika la. Dawe jingwa nyaka wa di. Tento. Yiki hong chila kyusu samza che. Dika sento sha. Ani hong yonso jowa le. Ani toji ka wad zengaba hong ki samba chik. Wadidu shi kyusu samza wa dine sha. So at this point, uh, we are is simply, you know, placing our mind uh, on the mere negation of the object of negation. Uh, this is, what does this then imply? And this is imply uh, a complete non-existence of a self? No, it does not imply that. It implies that a self it does not exist in any self-powered way. It's the sign that tells us that there is no such thing as a self-powered or objectively existent self. But it also points to what how the self does exist. It arises in dependence. It is something which is merely imputed in dependence, and that uh, certainly not non-existent. And so here we you know really generate that mere negation, just focusing on that mere negation. It produces the seed syllable hung. And this hung uh, on the moon disk uh, is uh, marked by a five white pronged vadra. And this is uh, something white. Five pronged Vajra is um, something which is at the heart of myself, all sentient beings, and of course the Guru Buddha in the space in front as well. ก็จะเลยก็จะเลยคนละลูกสุกุตุสัตย์ตากันจะจะไปทุเรียนสายมาแล้วว่าจีงอดจะมาขอเลยเซมเดียเซมกี้เจ๊งกันจีนะพ่
Kanye Tangtum, what are Dile, Tamet, Tenet, Sanga, and it, and it's a caso de caso de Judegan Namsa to get a tetigage. Tetigage. Ra, Ra, what are the Judegan Namsa la Sobata to get it, and it's a tetigage. What a tetigage, what a what a little that never down to watch it, what a little. And so this conclusion is profound because once we realize that phenomena are, are merely imputed, that all phenomena are merely imputed and have no way of existing outside of that, it validates the whole cause and effect uh, instructions, a uh, cause and effect uh, uh, system. And therefore, uh, looking into uh, the cause and effect instruction, for example, of uh, generating the mind of enlightenment is validated. It allows for this to actually be true. Ranga Zangaba that <laughs> Therefore, this mind of emptiness, which is symbolized by the white five-pronged Vajra marked by the syllable Hong, and the, the mind of enlightenment symbolized by the white moon disk mandala. And so we really, really kind of try to develop that these symbols of both of these mindsets are not only at our heart center, at the heart center of all sentient beings, but that we pray that we may never be separated from them, that they will always be there for us, that this emptiness wisdom and this mind of enlightenment we see as actually the basis uh, of definite happiness for me. This is really where it matters. This is the foundation of the definite happiness that I so want. And so the uh, that we we pray that the, the mind of enlightenment is symbolized by the moon disk. The, the wisdom of emptiness is symbolized by the uh, white five-pronged vajra that may, wherever they have not been arisen, may they arise, may they arise and grow and, and grow forevermore. And so we really see this in our heart always, unseparated, but to also understand that it is the absolute most meaningful practice that we can do in this life. It's at the very top of the list of that which is most meaningful for us. And so we have to place it with that sense of importance uh, to always kind of be mindful and uh, to act accordingly um, on the basis of what we consider to be uh, most precious and most important to us. 
啊,好事的,過這個,你都多個,下多個,這些個有嘛,好事的,當然個,sem,sem,sem,sem,sem,sem,sem,sem,sem,sem,sem,sem,sem,sem,sem,sem,sem,sem,sem,sem,sem,s
Mune dane ge koba de tutu bu mudos mitu ba neta wale. Rangdi tembe tonwa da nyawe ta ne toba ye takbe mesa luko she nyoba jose chisi chasa. And so um Till now, till now, we've been looking at, you know, how important uh, is the meditation on death. Uh, death is definite. The time of death is indefinite and only uh, virtue will be of any good to us at that time of death. And uh, this is uh, taking it further here in a um, an outline which says that uh, if we do not really work at virtue right now, from now on, then we will not achieve what we should achieve, what is necessary to achieve. And what it's referring to here is that, you know, it's having taken a, a human life, not only that, but having taken a precious human rebirth, uh, it means that we will not have taken the essence of that opportunity. Having heard uh, the Buddha Dharma and met with the Buddha Dharma, again, it will be not having taken the essence of the opportunity afforded, having heard the, the Dharma itself. And even though, you know, we call ourselves a Mahayanist, again, you really haven't understood, you know, really taken what is necessary from uh, that uh, ideal. And so you will end up uh, in a bad way. And uh, verses number 10 um, gives some detail uh, on that, which says, Tormented by the memory of my evils and hearing the sounds of hell, in terror, I shall clothe my body in excrement. What virtue can I do in such a delirious state? Tatigua <laughs> Tajan and so uh, this uh, verse is, uh, is quite uh, self-explanatory. Here we have a mind which is completely tormented by the memory of our own negativities, all the negativities that we've engaged in before. And it's it's tormented also because of having understood what was necessary to do, but we kept putting it off. We kept going, oh, I'll get on to, you know, the virtuous side of things later, 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 later. The procrastination, putting things on the long finger uh, again and again and again. And so we reach a point uh, at death where we realize and even though now, oh yeah, now I get I get into my dharma practice, but it's it's too late. You don't have the capacity anymore. Uh, you missed out on that opportunity. And so here, even though you've accepted the dharma, you've wasted a life. And so this is the the real torment. Not only that, but at this stage, you're hearing uh, the sounds of others uh, who have gone to the hell realms and are uh, crying out in agony, uh, you know, being burned in the fires of hell and so on. And that this so causes so much paranoia uh, that you actually soil yourself and you smear your body with excrement. And so you fall into this delusional uh, state. 
and that um, here um, you 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 really are kind of like in a state of absolute uh, um, uh, despair, um, and so you kind of go crazy at that, and so it's kind of like you know at that point you know you realize you should have you know engaged in uh, a virtue throughout your life. Uh, but you didn't. You didn't establish that which you was necessary. You didn't do what what was necessary. So what's the lesson in this is that now I must dedicate my through my own three doors everything I do in terms of my body, speech, and what I think has to be dedicated towards virtue. I must absolutely push myself uh, to make every effort to uh, accumulate virtue from this moment on. 我覺得他反正這個這個說的對軍的對軍的長久的生的東西都被寫到的這個都沒有一樣啊你可這個呃七話的推吧卡多了呢可呃卡多了呢卡多的呃公土啊就有個話公公別公公別公公然後上過去
kind of like skewed as mental affliction. It is a surround our Hello, hello. Hello. <coughs> hello. Uh, hello. You good? Uh, yeah. Oh yes. Yeah. So uh, again, I was saying uh, that um, that in in you know our our thinking is dependent on the habit of thinking that we have generated, and we know from our own experience that our thinking is so easily tending towards mental affliction because that's what we have become habituated towards. Therefore, work is necessary in order to change that uh, programming and to habituate our mind towards virtue uh, so that at the time of death, that is what then arises uh, automatically. This is why the emphasis is on maintaining the mindset of the mind of enlightenment and the wisdom of emptiness is so crucial. Good. <clears throat> So if we manage to die with the moment of the our death infused with the mind of enlightenment and the wisdom of emptiness, then there is no doubt that we will gain a good rebirth. It is absolutely certain uh, that that will be the case. Uh, it's not necessary to actually make aspirational prayers for it, even. It's going to be guaranteed. And so, but... If we don't make preparation for that moment, you know, to ensure that that is the last conscious moment uh, that we have in this life, and then it won't happen for us. We need to work on that now to make it the go-to, the habit, that which automatically arises for us. And so, you know, from here on in, regardless of what happen happens uh, in our lives, uh, whether it's a happiness or whether it's sadness, whether it's uh, that which is regarded as good or negative, uh, whether we gain a job, whether we lose work, uh, whether uh, the business we have is going well or badly. If we can be absolutely consistent, in sustaining a mind of enlightenment, wisdom of emptiness attitude through all of all of that, then uh, we will be able to turn all uh, our situations, all our interactions into conducive qualities or conducive conditions uh, for a virtue. And if we're able to do that in life, that is exactly what will happen at death. That we will be able to turn that period, that time, that moment into that which is a conducive uh, uh, attitude to have at that time. What and so uh, that's extremely important, uh, as you can imagine. And so as it says in the commentary, you know, that uh, from right now, then we should really begin that process of, of striving for virtue. 
And of course, this doesn't necessarily mean that we run off and become a monk or a nun or we go into solitary retreat. Uh, what it means is that you you make these uh, twin mindsets of the mind of enlightenment and the wisdom realizing emptiness uh, a part and parcel of every moment of your awareness. That's what it's saying. So we are exhorted to engage in the Dharma, engage in the Dharma, do Dharma practice and so on. Uh, but uh, we have to understand what that actually means. It doesn't mean that necessarily uh, that if you are a monk, you are engaging in spiritual practice. If you're a nun, you're engaging in spiritual practice. If you're on retreat, if you're doing certain rituals that you're doing a certain practice, it means that if you have, you know, the virtue in your mind, if you have the attitude uh, that we are speaking about in your mindset, then your all your actions are going to be spiritual practice. The uh, second outline is discussing uh, the importance of abandoning laziness when reflecting on the suffering of future lives. And this has four subsections. The first is uh, show that this it is definite that suffering will arise. Secondly, that suffering will be difficult to bear. Thirdly, wishing for happiness on the one hand without engaging in virtue on the other is an oxymoron. Fourthly, an exaltation or a, a kind of a an inspiration to work at the means of liberation from suffering. This is a Jigasode <laughs> And so it's worth remembering that we're on the chapter discussing uh, enthusiastic effort and to um, 
to, to see as the major obstacle to that is the is laziness. And so here, all these verses are designed to abandon laziness, be it the, uh, the laziness of being uh, clinging to that which is in negative actions, the laziness of defeatism, and the laziness of sloth and procrastination. And so here, it's looking into what are the implications of a lazy attitude uh, in terms of future suffering. So reflecting on uh, what's going to happen in the future. And so uh, the uh, first verse here is talking about, you know, being uh, really kind of like uh, say addicted to this life's happiness and how that is going to uh, um, really not turn out well for us in the future. So here it's uh, the first of the subheadings, the uh, the fact that suffering will arise for sure, definite. Uh, verse number 11 in our text reads, If even in this life I shall be gripped with fear, like that of a live fish being rolled in hot sand, why even mention the unbearable agonies of hell that will result from my unwholesome deeds? So here we're discussing the, the way in which this life is dominated by attachment to what we want and aversion towards what we don't want, etc. And from that, uh, you know, myriad negativities are accumulated and how this will uh, act as a, a major torment to us at the time of death. Here it's likened in the image of the fish uh, thrown out of its element uh, into hot sand and the way it flaps and back and forth. You know, just a terrible kind of suffering it is from the fish's uh, point of view uh, that brings a fear into our own mind when we reflect on, on the negativities that we inevitably must have accumulated, uh, you know, through all of these lifetimes since beginningless time in cyclic existence, where, you know, most of these lifetimes may have been spent in the lower realms. And so when we reflect on all the negativities that we have inevitably accumulated uh, in, in the, all of that time, um, and uh, no wonder, you know, we um, are paranoid and, and, and really scared because we know that we will have to experience the results of those negativities directly. Chung 
Kondo Sawala Tene and Middle Pandavake Rota. Kugabjuna, Pandavake, Nevake Vatila Tene, Lenya Basavayena, Titung and Padumeva Noetele, Yogutua. Conrosa, so uh, really all we need to do is reflect on how brittle we are in our mood, in our kind of mental, you know, uh, well-being, how easily we are upset by uh, somebody you know, directing some negative word at us. Uh, that uh, causes uh, presses our button and immediately uh, we get angry at uh, at that criticism and that uh, and if we have if we have an opportunity for revenge we take it uh, to get back at them uh, this sort of you know general mind state or mindset there uh, is the classic causes that will lead us to the lower realms and it's very obvious if we're in a situation where, you know, somebody is harming and we have, you know, no patience for that, but we immediately return the harm and get involved in some fracas, then, uh, you know, we can see that's laying down powerful uh, imprints on the mind that have only one result, and that is the uh, rebirth in the lower realms. And if we reflect on how easy that is to happen in this life, we know that this has certainly occurred countless times over uh, countless rebirths since beginning this time and so we have a right to really you know fear uh, having to experience the direct results of these um, uh, actions in the lower realms and so as it says in the verse, you know, what needs to be said, you know, no need to mention uh, the uh, unbearable agonies of hell that will result from my unwholesome deeds. If in this life I am so upset by just a negative word directed towards me, some little bit of criticism, uh, you know, no need to mention the kind of suffering I would have to undergo, body and mind, in uh, in the in the lower realms. What 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 So this is the outline which states. Oh, I think we. Um, can anybody hear me? Yeah. Hello. Hola. 
was present. <laughs> Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Hello, Nola. Yeah. Kugudu. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Hello. Oh, hello. You're back. Oh, <laughs> he's gone. He's back. I guess you can't hear me either. Hello, hello. Can anybody hear now? Yeah, yeah. Hello. Hello. Hello, Gena. Hello, hello. Good. Good. Uh, uh, good. So, uh, so as Gena was saying, this uh, verse deals with how suffering is definite. The definite is going to happen in the future. And that, uh, you know, we can see that what we want to is to create the causes of happiness. But that requires effort on our part. Mm, otherwise, you know, if we are not making effort at virtue, it's fair to say uh, that we are in kind of in a situation where we're continuously engaging in uh, the causes for suffering in the future. So we've got to really set the mind very definitely on making that effort at virtue. And the uh, second uh, of those four outlines is that um, uh, if we... If suffering is definite in the future, secondly, that is going to be difficult to bear. And verse number 12 uh, deals with that, which is, how can I remain at ease like this when I have committed the actions that will bear fruit in my delicate infant's body encountering boiling acids in the hell of tremendous heat? <clears throat> And so here it's, uh, it's re referring to the uh, being reborn again in the uh, cauldron of the hot hells where you have this kind of acid-like hot spring of water. And this is touching uh, your incredibly sensitive skin. Like this, the, like the skin of an infant, and that uh, you know, just to even thinking about that, the how much, how bitter, how harsh that suffering that will have to be experienced, and so, mm -hmm. and to and to know that you know we are creating the causes to be born in such a hell in every um day, uh, they are being uh, there, and so how can we remain? satisfied with ourselves how can we may remain at ease uh, when we know we have uh, committed such actions Cassot, because Gazan 
ก็ชิมาดูอาจารย์เนี่ยเนี่ยเป็นจิกาโซเดสการเจเนตาเซมลูกจะเนี่ยเด็กอยู่เลยสตาร์ทเด็กจิสายอยู่นะอันนี้เ
Tabu And il lait de la soeur tabjane de Gazole, d'Akajaja, Daniel Kedre. What are the quoi de tocho de Yonde de toi? Toi, Tad, quand il est now, quand il est chava in a chanju the same gear that don't you to be shut up away the chimina, the gangurta. Chanju the same gone in Yawaki to Mara, don't you to be shut up when Yawaki Mara. And so at that point of death, you know, it will be the most powerful karmas that will come to the fore uh, in the final uh, say. And that um, when we, if we at that point, you know, start to feel incredibly hot uh, in the body, uh, the thought will arise for us, oh, I wish I could cool down. And this is the, the, the trigger that awakens the karma for you to be automatically uh, reborn in a cold a hell and then conversely if you're feeling tremendous uh, cold at that point at the very end of the death process and that you wish for to to warm i wish i could be warmer that triggers uh, the karma to awaken to send you automatically to a uh, 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 a hot hell and so this is a The, the way it happens for us is it you know we are kind of like in this way you know automatically sent in this way so but if we have habituated to the mind of enlightenment the wisdom realizing emptiness these mind imprints that have you know become our normal experience and our habit these put a stop to these kind of karmas awakening and we will not enter into a lower realm let alone a hell realm ペナディジュンデネダムグナワチャンデラムジャンダムデラワダムグナワチャンデダムデラワネマトバサムロトトニケサムロラワネトムマトチェバチャラワネトムマトサムマトバディカラセムチャディトバデデトンジュスベイシ
now. May I take on the suffering of that heat for them uh, on their behalf. And may I experience it all for myself. And when you are experiencing like that, then even if uh, those uh, feelings of cold and heat should be your experience at the time of death, uh, then uh, that uh, response to them of uh, implying or in 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 um, imbuing the uh, mind of emptiness and the mind of enlightenment uh, will kick in at that time. Mm. So we we again, it's about how skillful we are to integrate. Uh, all these two mindsets in all of our practices and all of our moments of life as much as we possibly can. If we don't do the necessary preparation, then we can't expect uh, this to be our automatic habitual response at the time of death. Um, let's uh, leave it there for now. So I uh, bring our minds uh, to bear on the merit field in the space in front. ตะกวาเกวายินะตะกวาเกวายินะตะกวาเกวายินะตะกวาเกวายินะตะกวาเกวายินะตะกวาเกวายินะตะกวาเกวายินะตะกวาเกวายินะตะกวาเกวายินะ
because of the lack of any uh, independent existence, we realize that phenomena arise in dependence. They are dependent arisings, which allows for a whole cause and effect of uh, to, to be validated. And therefore, uh, we can uh, talk about and really start the process of attaining enlightenment for the benefit of all sentient beings uh, to uh, be able to quickly, quickly attain that state of enlightenment. We are kind of like inspired to do that. We gain a certain conviction in how sure we are of that to attain that state of enlightenment. And this is uh, symbolized by the syllable A, ah, which transforms into the moon mandala seat on our crown. And therefore, then we make the invocation verse, O oh, glorious and precious Guru, come take your lotus and moon seed, place her on my crown. Keep me safe in your kindness, bestow on me the attainments of body, speech, and mind. At the end of the first recitation, the figure moves from the space in front, from the merit field. At the end of the second, they have arrived at our pre-prepared seat. And at the end of the third, we have the certainty that the Buddha will remain until we attain the state of enlightenment. We rejoice at that fact. We make the offerings of the seven limbs of practice and mandala offering. <clears throat> The you <laughs> And now again, we start to establish the, um, the special seating arrangement at our own heart center through reflecting on uh, the state of cyclic existence and uh, gaining a sense of renunciation uh, of that suffering and wanting to gain a definite emergence from cyclic existence. Again, uh, symbolized uh, by the syllable BAM, uh, which transforms into the lotus mandala seat at our heart center. And again, through reflecting on how all inner and outer phenomena lack any objective existence and are merely imputed, uh, the, the syllable uh, hong uh, is becomes manifest and transforms into the uh, moon sun disk uh, mandala. And then how this allows for uh, <coughs> all phenomena to rise in dependence, and that's a we gain that conviction in our own minds that, oh, you know, this is, makes it possible for me to attain the state of enlightenment in order to benefit all sentient beings. And we have that definite kind of more definite conviction in that aspiration. May uh, I indeed quickly, quickly attain the state of enlightenment in order to benefit all sentient beings. And that is symbolized by uh, this syllable, um, ah, 
which is transforms into the moon disk mandala seed. Then we utter the invocation verse again, O glorious and precious root guru, come take your lotus and moon seed placed here at my heart. Keep me safe in your kindness. Bestow on me the attainments of body, speech, and mind. At the end of the first recitation, the figure on my crown moves down through the crown chakra into the central channel. At the end of the second, uh, the Buddha has arrived at my pre-prepared seat. And at the end of the third, again, we have that wonderful certainty that the Buddha will remain until we attain the state of enlightenment. At this point, then, the petals of the lotus fold over and are sealed at their tips by a white five-pronged vajra. And they are surrounded by three mantras, the name mantra of Shakyamuni Buddha in a clockwise direction, uh, the mantra of Manjushri in an anti-clockwise direction, and the mantra of dependent arising or dependent origination in a clockwise direction. <laughs> Rotan <laughs> Tori And so, um, and then uh, light begins to emanate from the body, speech, and mind of the Guru Buddha in uh, at our heart center, which pervades through every cell of our body, from the crown of the head to the soles of the feet, and affecting a very thorough purification of all the negativities uh, that uh, have been accumulated since beginning this time, including uh, the. Uh, any negativity is associated with the ten non-virtues of uh, of killing, stealing, sexual misconduct, of uh, lying, harsh speech, divisive speech, and idle gossip, of covetousness and malicious intent and wrong view, of all the actions proscribed by the Buddha or naturally occurring uh, negativities. Um, all of the negativities that we've accumulated in this life and the ones uh, previous to this life and the ones previous to that and previous to that, going back to all our countless rebirths since uh, beginning this time and how we any infractions or downfalls concerned with the Pratimoksha vows, the Bodhisattva vows, the Tantric vows, uh, any uh, disrespect we have shown down from our parents up to our gurus, uh, all of the uh, obstructions that uh, maybe they're, you know, really interrupting positive future rebirth as a, uh, as a, in a human being, as a human being, a celestial being, or the attainment of liberation, uh, any uh, negativities uh, concerned with the uh, our physical selves, the, the body, being uh, disease and uh, uh, sickness and so on uh, that can be uh, impediments to our spiritual practice and similarly to any uh, issues with the mind and uh, sickness of the mind and so on that can act as impediments to our uh, spiritual practice they are all uh, purified completely uh, that uh, all of the uh, negativities uh, uh, that uh, kind of uh, have uh, interrupted our channels, winds and drops, or the elements of the, the body, uh, they are completely uh, purified as well. Um, and uh, in particular, that which acts as the main impediment to our quickly being able to attain enlightenment, being ordinary uh, perception. This is uh, now abandoned for pure perception. <laughs> 
Lamasha Potentially the combination of my own most subtle wind acting as the <laughs> substantial cause, together with the body of the Buddha acting as the cooperative conditions, my own body is transformed into the enlightened body of a Buddha. And then through the combination of my own most subtle mind or consciousness acting as the substantial cause, together with the mind of the Buddha acting as the cooperative conditions, my own mind is transformed into the enlightened mind of a Buddha. Now I see my own body, speech and mind as inseparable from the body, speech and mind of an enlightened being. This brings forth a sense of bliss which combines with voidness and I abide in the wisdom of non-dual bliss and voidness. The place that I am now in also is completely transformed uh, from uh, a degenerate state into that which is the palatial abode of an enlightened being. And then uh, seeing myself as both inseparable from uh, the body, speech and mind of an enlightened being and also lacking any inherent existence, I send out a countless rays of light equal in number to all of the sentient beings in all the six realms of existence. And as the light rays uh, dissolve into their crowns, they immediately arise as fully enlightened Buddhas. Uh, the place that they are, are have also is transformed of all faults and becomes uh, the palatial abodes of enlightened beings. Uh, I really uh, rejoice at this point, and today is the day that I've been able to lead all the sentient beings uh, to that very state of existence. How amazing, how wonderful it is. I see that that leading of all sentient beings to that state of enlightenment, all the virtue that has facilitated that, and myself as the agent of that virtue, as completely empty of any objective existence and merely imputed by thought. And this then produces a state of bliss which combines with voidness and I abide again in the wisdom of non-dual bliss and voidness. Je of course, um, here I'm operating at the level of um, aspiration and imagination. That, uh, certainly it isn't that easy to attain a state of enlightenment as described. But nevertheless, in my dedication, I realize I'm laying down uh, a very genuine seed. Uh, to able to be able to quickly, quickly, uh, really make that manifest. And especially when I am making uh, the mind of enlightenment and the wisdom of emptiness central to each experience I have in life, and that uh, may I be able to employ uh, both those mindsets in every situation I find myself in, 
be it one of happiness or suffering or in between, be it when I become a, an old person or a sick person or even ultimately at the time of death, uh, that uh, this uh, uh, mind of enlightenment and this wisdom of emptiness will be able to see all those situations as conducive uh, conditions uh, for my uh, practice. and Mandrasri, master of flawless wisdom, as well as Vajrapani, destroyer of hordes of demons without exception, Tsongkhapa, mm. crown jewel of the sages of the land of snows, Losangrakpa, at your feet, I make requests. That's all. I'll touch it. Thank you. Thank you, Gena. Okay. Okay. Take care, everybody. Okay, thank you.